Himalaya vastatrix is a fungus of the order Pachinialis, previously also known as uridinales, that causes coffee leaf rust (CLR), a disease that is devastating to susceptible coffee plantations. Coffee serves as the obligate host of coffee rust, that is, the rust must have access to and come into physical contact with coffee Coffea sp, in order to survive. There is no cure at the moment, although farms have managed to reduce their impact by replanting infected farms with hybrids that have a strong genetic resistance to rust. Appearance <inaudible> 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 The mycelium with uridinia looks yellow-orange and powdery, and appears on the underside of leaves as points approximately 0.1 mm in diameter. Young lesions appear as chlorotic or pale yellow spots some millimeters in diameter, the older being a few centimeters in diameter. Hyphae are club-shaped with tips bearing numerous pedicels on which clusters of uridiniaspores are produced. Telia are pale yellowish, teliospores often produced in uridinia, teliospores more or less spherical to limoniform, 26 to 40 times 20 to 30 micrometers in diameter, wall hyaline to yellowish, smooth, 1 micrometer thick, thicker at the apex, pedicel hyaline. Uridiniaspores are more or less reniform, 26 to 40 times 18 to 28 micrometers, with hyaline to pale yellowish wall, 1 to 2 micrometers thick, strongly warted on the convex side, smooth on the straight or concave side, warts frequently longer, 3 to 7 micrometers on spore edges. Spermogonia and AECIA are unknown. Topic: Life cycle. Himalaya life cycle begins with the germination of uridospores through germ pores in the spore. It mainly attacks the leaves and is only rarely found on young stems and fruit. Oppressoria are produced, which in turn produce vesicles, from which entry into the substomatal cavity is gained. Within 24 to 48 hours, infection is completed. After successful infection, the leaf blade is colonized and sporulation will occur through the stomata. One lesion produces four to six spore crops over a three to five month period releasing 300-400,000 spores. While the predominant hypothesis is that H. vastatrix is heteritious, completing its life cycle on an alternate host plant which has not yet been found, an alternative hypothesis is that H. vastatrix actually represents an early diverging autoecious rust, in which the teliospores are non-functional and vestigial, and the sexual life cycle is completed by the uridiniaspores. Hidden meiosis and sexual reproduction cryptosexuality has been found within the generally asexual uridiniaspores. This finding may explain why new physiological races have arisen so often and so quickly in H. vastatrix. Ecology <inaudible> 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 Himalaya vastatrix is an obligate parasite that lives mainly on the plants of genus Coffea, reportedly also on Gardenia in South Africa. It needs suitable temperatures to develop not less than 10 degrees Celsius and not greater than 35 degrees Celsius. The presence of free water is required for infection to be completed. Loss of moisture after germination starts inhibits the whole infection process. Sporulation is most influenced by temperature, humidity, and host resistance. The colonization process is not dependent on leaf wetness but is influenced greatly by temperature and by plant resistance. The main effect of temperature is to determine the length of time for the colonization process incubation period. Himalaya vastatrix has two fungal parasites, Verticillium hamiliae and Verticillium soliotae. The fungus is of East African origin, but nowadays widely spread in Africa, tropical Asia, and Central and South America. Coffee originates from high-altitude regions of Ethiopia, Sudan, and Kenya and the rust pathogen is believed to have originated from the same mountains. The earliest reports of the disease hail from the 1860s. It was reported first by a British explorer from regions of Kenya around Lake Victoria in 1861 from where it is believed to have spread to Asia and the Americas. Rust was first reported in the major coffee growing regions of Sri Lanka then called Ceylon in 1867. The causal fungus was first fully described by the English mycologist Michael Joseph Berkeley and his collaborator Christopher Edmund Broom after an analysis of specimens of a coffee leaf disease collected by George H. K. Thwaites in Ceylon. 
Berkeley and Broom named the fungus Hemalea vastatrix, Hemalea", referring to the half smooth characteristic of the spores and vastatrix. For the devastating nature of the disease, it is unknown exactly how the rust reached Ceylon from Ethiopia. Over the years that followed, the disease was recorded in India in 1870, Sumatra in 1876, Java in 1878, and the Philippines in 1889. During 1913 it crossed the African continent from Kenya to the Congo, where it was found in 1918, before spreading to West Africa, the Ivory Coast 1954, Liberia 1955, Nigeria 1962-63, and Angola 1966. Eurydospores are disseminated across long distances mainly by wind, and over short distances by both wind and rain. Other agents such as animals, mainly insects and man, occasionally have been shown to be involved with dissemination. History The disease was first described and named by Berkeley and Broom in the November 1869 edition of the Gardener's Chronicle. They used specimens sent from Sri Lanka, where the disease was already causing enormous damage to productivity. Many coffee estates in Sri Lanka were forced to collapse or convert their crops to alternatives not affected by CLR, such as tea. The planters nicknamed the disease, Devastating Emily, and it affected Asian coffee production for over 20 years. By 1890 the coffee industry in Sri Lanka was nearly destroyed, although coffee estates still exist in some areas. Historians suggest that the devastated coffee production in Sri Lanka is one of the reason why Britons have come to prefer tea, as Sri Lanka switched to tea production as a consequence of the disease. By the 1920s, CLR was widely found across much of Africa and Asia, as well as Indonesia and Fiji. It reached Brazil in 1970, and from there it rapidly spread at a rate enabling it to infect all coffee areas in the country by 1975. From Brazil, the disease spread to most coffee-growing areas in Central and South America by 1981, hitting Costa Rica and Colombia in 1983. As of 1990, coffee rust has become endemic in all major coffee-producing countries. Topic: 2012 coffee leaf rust epidemic. In 2012, there was a major increase in coffee rust across 10 Latin American and Caribbean countries. The disease became an epidemic and the resulting crop losses led to a fall in supply, outstripping demand. Coffee prices rose as a result, although other factors such as growing demand for gourmet beans in China, Brazil and India also contributed. The reasons for the epidemic remain unclear but an emergency rust summit meeting in Guatemala in April 2013 compiled a long list of shortcomings. These included a lack of resources to control the rust, the dismissal of early warning signs, ineffective fungicide application techniques, lack of training, poor infrastructure and conflicting advice. In a keynote talk at the Let's Talk Roya meeting El Salvador, November 4, 2013, Dr. Peter Baker, a senior scientist at CAB International, raised several key points regarding the epidemic including the proportional lack of investment in research and development in such a high-value industry and the lack of investment in new varieties in key coffee-producing countries such as Colombia. Economic impact. Coffee leaf rust CLR has direct and indirect economic impacts on coffee production. Direct impacts include decreased quantity and quality of yield produced by the diseased plant. Indirect impacts include increased costs to combat and control the disease. Methods of combating and controlling the disease include fungicide application and stumping diseased plants and replacing them with resistant breeds. Both methods include significant labor and material costs and in the case of stumping, include a years-long decline in production. Coffee seedlings are not fully productive for three to five years after planting. Due to the complexity of accurately accounting for losses attributed to CLR, there are few records quantifying yield losses. Estimates of yield loss vary by country and can range anywhere between 15 to 80 percent. Worldwide loss is estimated at 15 percent. Some early data from Ceylon documenting the losses in the late 19th century indicate coffee production was reduced by 75%. 
As farmers shifted from coffee to other crops not affected by CLR, land used for growing coffee was reduced by 80%, from 68,787 to 14,170 hectares. In addition to the costs mentioned above, additional costs include research and development costs in producing resistant cultivars. These costs are normally borne by the industry, local and national governments and international aid agencies. Colombia's National Federation of Coffee Growers Fedicafe set up a research lab specifically designed to find ways to stop the disease, as the country is a leading exporter of the Caffia arabica bean that is particularly prone to the disease. Topic: <laughs> Disease reports. Coffee crops in Guatemala have been ruined by coffee rust, and a state of emergency has been declared in February 2013. CLR has been a problem in Mexico. CLR disease is a big problem in coffee plantations in Peru, declared in sanitary emergency by government. Decreto Supremo N. Degree 082 2013 PCM. 